Out of all of the PlayStation 2 action games I've played for this channel up until now for videos both made and not yet, Ghost Rider is the purest form of the Devil May Cry clone that I've come across. But being a clone and inspired by something doesn't default to being bad in my book. If anything, this is probably the best Western action game I've played in maybe ever? I know that's not really that high of a bar, but bear with me, it's slim pickings. At this point, there is a formula or at least a pattern of trappings that bad action games suffer from, especially those trying to ape DMC, you could honestly apply a bunch of what I'm about to say to even good action games that just happen to have some pretty glaring flaws. The biggest issue is bad feedback, combat feedback will make or break your game, and the bad ones are usually on one of two ends of the spectrum, incredibly limp or incredibly stiff. The second thing is movement, both with your camera and the player character. Similar to feedback, your character is either going to feel light as a feather, like gravity doesn't affect them at all and there's no friction on the ground, or they feel like they're moving through tar. A lot of bad action games simply do not have camera settings. At one point last year while recording gameplay for a bunch of the videos I haven't made yet for this series, I lost the ability to play what you would consider now the modern camera orientation standard. All of those PS2 games I was playing playing only had inverted as an option. It was the default and the standard, so I just ended up having to get used to it, and once I went back to play new games like Lost Judgment, it felt completely foreign to move my stick right and the camera to move right. It felt like my hands were on backwards. Getting camera sensitivity options also came pretty late for a lot of series, like DMC4 doesn't have those settings, and it's the biggest factor that makes it hard for me to go back to DMC4 after playing so much of DMC5. The camera feels like you're churning through molasses. A lack of depth is up next. Be it very few combos or having things that can't flow together when in better games they would. The most common one being launchers into air combos. While I don't think it is 100% necessary, I definitely do find myself leaning towards games that do also have air combos. It is by far the most infuriating when a game has both combos on the ground and combos in the air, but they basically feel like two isolated things that don't interact act at all. I find that unless it is purposefully meant to be restrictive, the best stuff often has free-flowing combos that can tie the ground and air together. The final one is usually progression. Most of these games have horrible leveling systems that take forever to get abilities and start you off with practically nothing. So the game ends up leaving a terrible first impression when it wouldn't otherwise if you were just given some of the unlocks at the start. Hell, I would say that even DMC1's leveling system wasn't that good either. A bunch of the moves cost way too much in my opinion, but at least the game feels fun to play from the get-go. This is an issue that developers still haven't figured out how to avoid, as recent releases like Samurai Jack have abysmal progression. What the fuck is this? So now that I have covered the basics of what I'd consider a lot of bad action games suffering from that ends up holding them back from reaching their true potential, I want to praise Ghost Rider for having none of these issues. Right from the get-go, the game feels really fun to play. You have a decent amount of combos as soon as you are given control, there is good feedback for all of your moves, and stuff combos into each other in a way that you can just freeform and do your own thing and stuff is gonna work out. Some of the timings are a little tight and you're going to have to learn and get used to them, like catching enemies that have been thrown up into the air via a launcher, which you are trying to catch with the prop shred-like move. Its leveling system is not intrusive and or annoying. Like with DMC, the orbs you get from killing demons allow you to level up in the pause menu, giving you new moves. You get such a good amount of orbs that it doesn't take forever to get everything. By the end, I was sitting on so many points left over that I had nothing to do with them, unlike in DMC 1 and 3. I love these games, but having to buy air hike on multiple weapons in DMC 3 can suck my balls, and some of the pricings in DMC1 are too high for my liking. I know the idea is for multiple playthroughs, but when I just want to sit down and do everything in one sitting, it becomes really annoying. The one thing I don't like about Ghost Rider's progression is how some of your moves get replaced. Could they have not just made them directional inputs plus a button, or make them pause combos? Even if the new thing you get is better, it still feels bad to see moves get replaced when you really liked the original ones. Speaking 
Speaking of progression, I have no idea how this game shipped with such a horrible save bug that I could constantly corrupt my save file while playing this game for this video. How saving in a game normally works is when you go to the menu, the game suspends itself while it saves. Ghost Rider does not do that. While the standard save game prompt shows up telling you not to remove the memory card or turn off the console while saving, you still have complete control of the game. So if you say, accidentally hit the left stick while trying to set your controller down, since saving on a PS2 can take a minute, the cursor is going to select the next save file slot and then corrupt every single save you have up until now. How this made it into the final release and somehow got past the SEC compliance test is beyond me. So if you are someone who plans to play this game after seeing my video, please be wary to not touch your controller in any capacity when you are saving. If you do end up somehow corrupting your save file, you're going to have to save in a different slot than the one you originally had because it will corrupt every time. Time, it's going to give you an error no matter what. So say you have your save in the first slot, you corrupt it, go to the second or the third. This is at least what I experienced and how I got around it. So what's the story of this game? Well, uh, now this is going to sound like a complete joke, but I swear it's not. I ended up missing the entire story of this game due to it being so hot lately that I had to have my wall mounted jet engine disguised as an air conditioning unit on while recording. The game has no subtitles and my air conditioner is so fucking loud that it completely drowned out all the dialogue. I swear, I'm not kidding. But what I could piece together from the visuals is that Ghost Rider, played by a discount Nick Cage, since they probably couldn't afford him, is trying to stop Blackheart because, uh, I think he's trying to get resurrected or something. It's not really a one-to-one -one retelling of the original movie's story, but it does seem to have parts of it, at least from what I can remember. I haven't seen the movie in well over a decade. Sam Elliott a man who has been 60 years old since 1970 shows up because I guess he wasn't that expensive, and then Blade walks into frame drawn to be legally distinct enough that he vaguely reminds you of Wesley Snipes playing Blade, but not enough that they'd actually have to pay for his likeness, and then he helps you fight some fish people. Not an actual gameplay though, don't get too excited, that's only for cutscenes. You do get this cool shot where you guys ride off on motorcycles together into the horizon. So we've talked a bit about combat, let's move on to the level design and how the combat functions within it. The game, similar to DMC1 and DMC3, is almost entirely fixed camera combat arenas. The right stick, instead of controlling the camera, is used to dodge out of the way of things, which honestly felt really awkward, so I ended up neglecting it more than I realistically should have. Outside of God Hand, which it felt perfectly tuned to that game's tank controls, I've never been a fan of shifting the stick as a dodge option. I'd much rather be on a button that I could reliably press instead of having to take my thumb that is being used to press the face buttons during combos and needing to move it over to hit the right stick to dodge in a split second. It feels very unergonomic to me, and it's probably why this method of dodging isn't really seen in games anymore. The visuals for these levels is really nice. The lighting cast from Ghost Rider's head is pretty impressive for the time, though the game noticeably runs worse when the camera is zoomed out in really big arenas, especially the ones with sprawling backgrounds that have a lot going on in them. It's never choppy, but when you're only fighting a few enemies in a smaller arena with the camera zoomed in, it runs a butt smooth 60. This is something that people emulating this game probably won't have to deal with, but thankfully it only ever dropped to about 30 to 40 frames. The thing I dislike about these fixed camera arenas is when you are fighting the little imps that throw fireballs. No matter what, they always find a way to somehow just be off screen and throw one, and these fireballs have a deceptively larger hitbox than you'd think, so they'd always end up hitting me. The game's lack of a dedicated lock-on also makes fighting the imps a major pain in the ass, especially when they're mixed together in huge hordes of other enemies or the very large enemies that just seem to take priority over them. The imps also make it hard to keep your style rating up because the meter is honestly more demanding than it is in Double May Cry. When you get hit in DMC, you drop like two letter grades, where in Ghost Rider for comparison, if you take any form of damage, you will lose everything you have stacked up. You could be on Vengeance and have the blue flaming head, which I think adds small modifiers to your combat like increased explosion. I'm not really sure. Then you get hit from a stray fireball by an imp that's off screen and lose it all. Combine these imps with the enemies that 
can only be damaged once you have a certain style rating, a feature that was in this game nearly seven years before DMC Devil May Cry, and what you get is a recipe for a really fucking annoying enemy encounter. For as enjoyable as the combat is, I still have some gripes with it. Nothing I would consider a deal breaker or too major, it's just stuff that I see as missed potential to do something cooler. You have two meters, one which builds from the green orbs that enemies drop, and the other that builds simply from fighting. The green one allows you to cash it in to do a big AoE attack, and the other one is kind of a devil trigger? At least it says it increases your speed and damage, but the bigger thing about it is that it gives you the ability to do the iconic penance stare, which will one-shot any enemy you grab. I really wish they leaned more into giving you a powered up state. I'd like it to feel more like a devil trigger and less like I have red fart gas around me and an increase to damage that I can't really perceive. This is where the game leans more into the God of War inspiration rather than Devil May Cry. One of these moves even has an animation that looks similar to Poseidon's Rage. The most unique thing about this game that actually utilizes the Ghost Rider character is his motorcycle. Once you finish a level, you have to physically drive to the next one in a motorcycle segment. They beat Bayo on that shit by two fucking years. This is a really cool idea and it's actually executed pretty well. I just think that the motorcycle is a little too heavy, making turning a bit awkward, especially in the few times when narrow landing strips are present. The ragdolling when you do end up failing these segments are really funny though. The last thing I want to talk about in this video is the game's unfortunate ending. Longtime viewers of my channel know by now the thing that I hate the most about these types of games, and that is the giant enemy in front of alleged boss fights. It is a dog shit design, and this one is no different. You just dodge Blackheart's fist slams into the platform, and then you hit the jewel in the back of his hand until it breaks. Then you chain his face to the pavement, and you wail on it until he smashes off a part of the platform, making it smaller. Rinse and repeat two more times, and then he dies. And that's it. It doesn't do anything interesting or unique. It doesn't really wrap up all of the mechanics you've learned up until now. It just kinda happens and ends on a whimpering fart. I think this is one of the worst boss designs and tropes in gaming. There is only a single instance where I think it's actually done well, and that is an ultra kill. If any game developer out there is watching this, which first of all, why? Secondly, please, for the love of God, do not put these type of bosses in your game. They suck. They always do. After you beat Blackheart, the game does have some post-playthrough goodies. You have a few skins that are different comic book versions of Ghost Rider, along with being able to play as Blade. And Blade does have some slight gameplay differences, but not enough to make me actually want to play through the game again as him. Man, isn't it cool when games used to do this? Unlocking skins and bonus content after you beat the story mode, instead of making that shit a pre-order bonus or DLC like it is now? Ghost Rider was a tried-and-true PlayStation 2 action game, the most upfront DMC clone of the ones we've covered so far. But like I said at the start of this video, just because something is a clone of something doesn't inherently mean that it has no value. It set out to do something, and it did it very well, accomplishing something that a ton of games, even the ones coming out now, failed to capture. When I call it a DMC clone, I don't mean it in a derogatory. It has its clear inspirations, and does a good job to stand up next to them. Is it as good as DMC? Mm hmm. No, I wouldn't go that far, but it's still something worth your time and shouldn't be overlooked. It's a type of game that I would consider not being made anymore. If you've made it this far into the video, I just want to say thanks for watching as always. If you really liked the video, please leave a like and a comment. In the description below, I do also have a link to a list of all the games I would like to cover for this series. And if you really want to help support the channel, maybe consider becoming a patron on Patreon. All patrons get... All patrons get access to videos a day early, along with a $7 tier that gives you access to rough cuts of upcoming videos. I'm now going to shout out all of my $5 and up patrons who really help support the channel. Akita Fishkiyama, Bully, Densha, Francis, Jeff Ladd, Kohai Carmen, Cosmonaut Cola, Medi Not The Bad Guy, N.M., Nathan Redding, Nemphi, Quartz, Revan, Rovit, Ruben Rodriguez, Samuel Egan, Sayin Heg, Sir Newt Newt, Walkman, Ben Johnson, Brian Marcello, Bergnut, Chichometrius, David Roberts, Dusty the Zombie, Ek Frazo, Elliot Morton, Filthy Finger 69, Fish Kami, Justin Collini, Hax Mark Chick, Kevin Velasquez, Lotto, Lucy the Fox, Megan, Nicholas Pedinato, Onion Girl, Slemph Tingle, Solid Link, Starcasters, Some Panda, The FOE3, and William Moore. Thanks so much, guys.
As for what's coming out next, I'm probably just going to stick to doing more of these types of videos for a little bit until I have enough to cut them all together for like an hour and a half long video that I could title Obscure PlayStation 2 Action Games and hope the algorithm will really like it. If you're a card game player of any kind, I have a TCG Player affiliate link in the description below. Any purchases you make will give me a small kickback. TCG Player is also doing a 10% kickback deal on the 12th, which is two days at the time of releasing this video, so if you plan on buying any cards and want to use my affiliate link, consider waiting two more days. I also have a NordVPN affiliate link in the description below with a discount code on a two-year plan. And that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks for watching, and see you next time.